Welcome everybody to the uh, 10 Minutes to Roulette Fortune. In this uh, little video, I'm going to talk about something that um, is something I want to bring up to everybody, and that is the dangers of playing of online roulette or any game. Now, I don't gamble online because it's my belief that a computer, or I'm sorry, or their server either puts a cookie on your computer or a cookie on their server to keep track of how you're playing. Uh, the simulators are, I don't like them, so that's why I'm really skeptical about all of my systems, especially the new ones that I came with, up with, especially the four line one. And I say that because I've been having so much success with it. I mean, in theory, I know these are number generators that just happen to spin and drop the number where the you know, random number generator comes up with. But I want to point something out here, which is the reason for me coming up with this video. I was setting up a video to do uh, the bonus round for my four line. Hang on a second, Da. Sawadee cop. Couldn't somebody my cop, Da. Couldn't she try? Cop, cop. Let me uh, call you back in about 15 minutes. All right. Cop, cop. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Um. Anyway, where was I? Distractions. You gotta love them. Especially in the casino. The casinos are full of distractions. Uh, anyway, with that in mind. Back to what I was talking about. Notice the sequence over here. Look at this. It's absolutely, in my opinion, impossible to have 15s, 13s, 33s popping up. No. There's something going on here. And that's why I really don't like uh, simulators or uh, even playing online roulette. Now, again, they could put cookies on your server or something along the line. But, uh, you know, with that in mind, I highly advise people not to gamble online. And also equally be skeptical of any um, simulator that you might be using because uh, for the same reason. I know this is just a play simulator I'm working with here. But uh, it's not until you do actual live play that you can come to the conclusion whether or not a strategy theory is possibly working out. So be leery of that. And uh, in conclusion, I might as well take up a couple minutes and talk about my views um, on gambling and how a person can be most successful. A little bit about me. In the past, I had some addictions. Uh, I won't go into that. So what I'm getting to is I understand people's addictions and how dopamine in the brain works. Uh, there are many distractions, like I mentioned, in the casino, one of which, of course, most important, one that comes to mind are the slot machines. There's a reason why it takes up most of the real estate in a casino, and that's because the bell frequencies are set up on purpose to distract the brain uh, and to give it a slight dose of dopamine. And that's essentially what those frequencies do if you study it. Uh, so with that in mind, just as there are distractions with that, I think there are also distractions with a roulette table. I would consider this huge area, big jump of real estate. Think about slot machines too. Slot machines take up a great deal of real estate in casino wise because they make the most money off of these slot machines. And that's the reason why I think they have implemented the sounds of the bells to hit a certain frequency that play with the brain. So a lot of times I go to a casino brick and mortar and I see people that are dumping all these money in stacks of five chips, four chips, three chips, and they're doing this. And then the one number they happen to hit happens to be the one with three chips, and yet they have, you know, 50 bucks or 60 bucks uh, on a table or 70 bucks. And I ask myself, is that unit win going to actually cover all of the other bets? So with that in mind, I really think the answer to roulette falls within the wheel itself. Why is the wheel is oftentimes in the same position it's at? Way over here, people are watching this, 
And when people really can't see the wheel happening, they're watching the monitor. So something you really can't watch. One of the things that kind of control the outcome also has to be the speed of the wheel that's going counterclockwise and the ball that's going clockwise. Uh, different speeds can also affect where it drops on the board itself. Um, and for that reason, there are certain patterns that happen uh, or could happen on the board. But then again, back to the premise of this video is the fact uh, I want you to be very careful um, of playing online for this very reason. That's absurd. The same thing happens for black and black and red. You know, people are playing black and red, and what happens? They have to use pretty much a martingale system because a martingale system uh, has to be used because it only pays back one unit per win. Now, using my four lines, it pays back two units per win. Uh, so, but then again, you could go on an extensive run of reds, you know, or in this situation, look at this situation again, large strings of blacks. So, and this would wipe out somebody's martingale system. So I really think in closing that these tables in a sense, or not tables, but the online simulators and actual casino games, they're gonna throw you curveballs. And for that reason, I'd like for you to be careful of playing with them and of course do so at your own risk. Uh, more importantly, uh, gamble responsibly and uh, learn that tough discipline of walking away. It's like, uh, I'll be straight with you. Um, back when I had a cocaine problem, um, I was always thinking, you know, let's keep more and more and more and then tolerance builds up and I needed more and more and more. Uh, and it was a fun way of living life, living on the edge. I think it's what happened is, you know, I was in the Marine Corps and had a situation that happened that um, resulted in my memory failure from here to there. But aside from that, I, I found, I guess, pleasure in using the cocaine because of the adrenaline rush it would give me. Um, a lot of people that were in the military can tell you that they become addicted to the adrenaline. So adrenaline also plays a role in gambling. But I haven't been affected. I'm, I'm very, uh, the story uh, that I can tell you really quickly, I have three minutes left. And that is what happened when I was uh, on a vacation with my mom and dad. They wanted to take me to Vegas right before I went off to boot camp. So we went down to two or three days, and mom and dad were off doing whatever they were doing. I don't know, it was late at night. They were in the hotel room. Oh, they were probably shagging or something. But besides that, God, I hope you don't watch this one, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you do, I'm sure you're laughing. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Uh, but anyway, so I'm watching this guy. He was an older, no, he was a medium age, middle aged gentleman. He was probably in his 50s, maybe 52, 53. He was casually dressed like everybody else in Vegas. He didn't look like a vagrant at all, so I wouldn't want to put that on him at all because that's judgmental. But in the most part, he had in his hand what looked like, I would think, because I couldn't see him, seven or eight quarters left. And he walked up to a slot machine, and he was in view of me. I could see his face and his hands. And he sat down, and he looked at his hand with the quarters, and he looked at the screen, or back in the day it was kind of nice because it was one arm bandit and the change used to fall, and I kind of missed that, but I digress. He reached into his hand, grabbed one of these quarters, and slid it in the machine, pulled the handle, and nothing happened. Oh. Anyway, um, he reached for another quarter, and he slid it in the slot, and of course, once again, nothing happened. And he sat back and he lit a cigarette and uh, he probably paused for maybe, oh, I'd guess 30 seconds, reached into his hand, grabbed another quarter and slid it in the slot, pulled the handle and no change fell. Now, I consider myself to be a very intuitive person. Many people have thought I should, you know, get into psychology of some sort because I can read people very quickly. I, I'm pretty confident of that. Anyway, I could pick up this guy's energy, and his energy was intense as he reached into his hand and he grabbed his last quarter. All right, he put his quarter in the machine, 
he pulled the handle and he lost and I'm looking at this guy watching him and god my heart kind of sunk for the guy you know looked like he looked like he just spent his last quarter and he stopped and a second and a half later he dumped his head into his hands and I couldn't see his eyes but I could only I picked up on his energy and I thought maybe he was crying so that really caused me to think if I ever were to gamble and I do gamble gamble conservatively to have discipline and know how to walk away because in my mind I would hate to feel the way I felt that guy felt and I hope that for everybody and I understand it's hard to walk away it was hard for me to walk away from cocaine uh, but having said that I, I hope you can instill that discipline in you and have fun when you're doing it but most important know how to walk away and I'll, I'll jump off my soapbox it's well over 10 minutes having said that in closing uh, be careful of playing online they throw you curveballs as you can see right here I don't want that happening to you all right you guys have a great day and a better tomorrow take it easy